Hi guys, welcome to the second video on Oriental Arts. I hope that yesterday's video that was about the practical side of things helped you a little bit in understanding the background about moving your arms in belly dancing. Uh, today's video will address some mistakes and also try to offer some tips on how to improve your arm movements. Our background music today is Hobi, sang by Umka Zoom and composed by Bali Pandi. Um, it's good to remember those names if by any chance you haven't heard those. Um, I'm also mentioning the composer because I always kind of found it funny how people when they speak about famous songs they only mention uh, the, the singer and I find it a little bit unfair because imagine if we spoke about movies and we would say the movie Shining by Jack Nicholson. Well, it's not Jack Nicholson, it's Stanley Kubrick, right? It's a little bit the same thing with the songs. Don't just think about the singers, the faces of the music, also think about who composed those songs. So this is Balik Hamdi, definitely a name to remember. He composed a lot of beautiful, beautiful songs for dancing. Um, so <clears throat> about the arms. What you can usually see when people are teaching arms is that people do a lot of things with the wrists, with the fingers, and things that look really pretty and uh, that are very specific to oriental dance. Uh, but when you look at the bigger picture, they are usually not movements that you will use in your dancing all the time. So this is one issue that I want to address. There are a lot of instructional videos on oriental arms out there, but a lot of those will teach you things like that and a lot of different movements like this. And they are very pretty, but when you're dancing um, and you only do these movements, it doesn't look right because uh, these movements I would compare more to bells and whistles. They are the special effects, they are the oriental dance specific movements, which is great. But when you look at oriental music and when you will really use these movements, you really use those mainly just in taxims. And let's be honest, how many taxims? Do you dance in a song? There is sometimes one taxim that sometimes there is no taxim at all. So it's nice to focus on, on these things, but don't get too stuck on that because what is important is not how many of these little uh, waves with your fingers you can do, but about your body posture. The essential part of having beautiful arms in dance doesn't start with the wrist. It doesn't start with the fingers. It starts in your back. So the first thing you need to do is to find some power between your shoulder blades. A lot of people, when they are starting to move, they sort of just do this. Yeah? They just do that and they start their arm movements from this position, which I think is not correct because this is a very unnatural position. You should definitely not get too much into a habit of just raising your arms and leaving them here when you are dancing because in your dance, your arms are going to move all the time. It's very rare that your arms just suddenly stop when you are dancing, usually that's in an accent. Yeah? Otherwise, most of the time, your arms should be just moving. And the movement comes from breath. Yeah? Imagine when you breathe in, your arms go gently up, and when you breathe out, your arms go gently down. So I would call this the most basic movement in your dancing. So, some people would say the basic movement in oriental dance is a shimmy, a hip circle, and a, a wrist circle. For me, that's not the basic movements in oriental dance. That's the specific movements to oriental dance. The basic movements to oriental dance is a step, and it's how you breathe. Yeah? When you breathe in, your body contracts, you raise your chest, you push your shoulders back, and your arms raise slightly. And when you breathe out, exhale, the opposite happens. And that's basically the basic movement of the upper part of the body. While the basic movement of the lower body is shifting of weight and a step. So if you're looking at the basic movements of your lower part of the body, it would be shifting weight from left to right. When you look at the basic movement of the upper part of the body, it's breathing in and raising your arms slightly naturally and exhaling. I know it's not as glamorous as 1000 types of shimmy, but it's the truth, yeah? So, of course, we need to look at the wrist as well, 
but we don't need to focus on that that much in detail. What we need is for our arms to be controlled from the beginning, which is in the middle of your back, to the end, which is not the wrist, it's the fingers. Yeah? So what you need to do is to find some tension in your back, between your shoulder blades, and learn how to keep your fingers gently together. Now, this might be a little bit controversial and people might have a lot of different opinions on it, but I like to keep these two fingers together. Um, I did a little bit of Latin dancing before I started Oriental dance and of course I'm a little bit influenced by that and I'm not saying that you are supposed to keep your hands like you're dancing cha-cha but it helps to keep the fingers gently together because once your fingers start to do this it just doesn't look very pretty. Uh, what I would suggest is to hide your thumb because that one you don't really need and it just makes the whole hand look bigger and to keep these two fingers together. Once you do this, you have sort of a uniting little line at the end, something that unites the hands and gives them a sense of control. And if you have some tension in the middle of your back and you connect it to the end of your fingers and to this little tension, you are controlling the whole hands from two ends. You are controlling the arms from the beginning in your back to the end in your fingers. And then the whole arm in between can be quite relaxed. Yeah, that's sort of what you want. You want to control the beginning, you want to control the ends. And then the first exercise I would do is just to learn to breathe through that. Yeah, just inhale, activate your back, raise your arms gently and exhale, lower. Yeah? When you lower the arms, you don't want to exaggerate it and go with your shoulders to the front. You need to control that. You can exaggerate a little bit when you contract and when you go up. When you're relaxing, you need to sort of watch it a little bit so your back doesn't get rounded. So just keep doing that for a little bit. I will turn around so you can see my back. I inhale, raise my arms, exhale, relax. Inhale, contract, and just let the arms react to the movement in your back. Yeah, and when you are relaxing, again, first relax the arm, then relax the back. There needs to be a logical continuity to the movement, which starts from the center. It always looks weird when people have relaxed arms and they are raising their arms. It just, this doesn't look logical. Yeah, you always need to start the contraction and the activation from the center, from the belly and from the back. So the next exercise that I would like you to do is to find different directions and different lines across all different directions. Yeah, so you can go to the front, you can go to the side, you can go up, you can go down, just like that. Yeah, try to travel around while you're breathing. Exhale, inhale, exhale and try to travel to the front to the side and down now be a little bit careful how much you're going up with your arms i think it makes quite a lot of difference if you're using your arms in this area and when you are using your arms here um, we know that oriental dance belly dancing raksharki is supposed to feel naturally now, of course, people would raise their arms as well, yeah? And there are a lot of arm positions where the arms go up. But once you go up with your arms, it always sort of looks like more effort, yeah? When you are just breathing and you inhale and you do this, you can observe that your arms really just only go up to here, yeah? So my habit, when I want the dance to look naturally, when I'm dancing folklore, is to use my arms in a synchronized way and mainly sort of in this area rather than forcing my arms up all the time. Of course, I raise my arms as well, like when I'm doing a big stretch, but I would not forget my arms here and just sort of leave them above my head for a long time. Yeah, it would be sort of a special moment of a, of a stretch. Uh, now I mentioned another thing and that is moving the arms in a synchronized way. That is another very useful thing to do. Why? 
when I started zillion years ago, uh, my first teachers would, from, uh, from what I see as a mistake, teach me to put one arm up, one arm down, and then change positions in, in a way that didn't make any sense to me. Also, I didn't quite understand why with a hip drop, this arm must be up and this arm must be down. And these rules just didn't make any sense. Why they didn't make any sense? Because they don't make any sense. <laughs> they, there are no rules like that. When you're doing a hip drop, it's absolutely fine to keep your, your hip like that and your arms like that. Your arms can be in front, your arms can be back. If somebody is forcing you to have arm here and another arm here because, don't listen. It's a stupid rule that's just making your life difficult. And why is it so difficult? It is difficult because usually your left arm is weaker and slower than your right arm. Your arms are not balanced. Or if you're left-handed, it's the other way around. We are naturally not balanced when it comes to the left and to the right side. And if you start your dance practice with adding another sort of disharmony to that by keeping arms in different positions, it just adds to the whole confusion. So you have to be careful about that. If you're teaching beginners, I strongly recommend that you teach your beginners to move your arms in a synchronized way and find a connection between the left and between the right arm first before you start to divide. Yeah? Also, you need to find a connection between the arms, not just in your head, but especially in your back, because that's where the arms connect. Yeah? So the uniting point of your arms is between your shoulder blades. From there, you can move your arms around in a synchronized, beautiful way. And if you are able to control your arms like this, then you might be ready to divide them and move them not in a synchronized way and move arms in different directions. But first of all, I think you should be able to master to do basic lines in a synchronized way. Yeah? After that, you can divide. That's absolutely fine. All right, so the next exercise I would like you to do, and I know these things seem very, very basic, but um, to have beautiful arms in oriental dance is not about practicing this for hours. That's not going to help you. I, honestly, I don't know if I ever used this movement in the last 18 years in my dancing. I might have in the beginning because I was a little bit confused, but now when I dance, mostly what I do with my arms are big movements, big lines, yeah? And then occasionally I would do something like that, but that's just a really small portion of, of the whole bulk of arm movements. The most of your arm movements will be inhale, big circle, things like that. And I know it might seem a little bit too ballet-like, but we are mainly dancing on stages. We are not dancing like Egyptian women do in our living room. If you're dancing just in your living room, by all means, just do little arm movements. But all of us, we are training for a show. Yeah? That's how we are trained. That's how we learn. We are learning to be on a stage. And when you are on a stage, a tiny little wrist movement is just not going to do. You need to take space. And the way you take space is by doing big movements, things like this, yeah? Things that are meant to be done on a stage, yeah? So these movements you direct from the back, you leave the arm relaxed and keep the, the fingers gently together. And if you are able to control the arm like that, I think you have a pretty good chance of having nice arms. Don't think that it's a waste of time to just stand in front of a mirror and just inhale and exhale and move your arms into different directions. Yeah? The next thing that you can add to that is shifting weight. Yeah? Don't add automatically a shimmy or hip circles or again, these specific things. You know, think, people think that oriental dance is about doing a shimmy and this with your hands. Mm, it might look like belly dancing, but once you're on the stage, it's not gonna help. Yeah? What you need when you're on the stage is to be able to shift weight to the music, find the tempo of the song, shift weight to it, and start breathing. Yeah? Inhale, see what that does to your shoulders, 
and exhale again, see what it does to your shoulders. Then add your arms to it. Just shifting weight, inhaling, raising my arms, exhaling, lowering my arms. And this might seem really, really boring, but it's a really, really good exercise to be able to connect to the music and to be able to move your arms with how you're moving your feet. Once you, are, you have that, you can start moving your arms around in different directions. You can go to the front, you can go back, but always make sure that you are directing your arms from the tension in your back, that you're never doing something like this. You don't want that. Yeah? Another thing that you want is when you're raising your arms, push your shoulders back, don't push your shoulders up. That's another mistake that a lot of people are making. When they are raising your, their arms, they are starting to raise their arms from the shoulders. It's definitely not something that you want because when you're dancing, you need a long neck. So when you are raising your arms, you need to do the opposite. You need to push your shoulders back to activate. Because when you do this, you're not activating anything in your back and there always needs to be that contraction between your shoulder blades. So what you do, again, you contract between your shoulder blades, activate the upper back, and then you start raising your arms. You see the difference? If I do this, there is no contraction between my shoulder blades and it doesn't look good. When I do that, that's what we want. Yeah, it's harder, but it looks better. So I can shift my weight and this sort of movement, watch my fingers so my fingers don't get into that, watch my wrist so it doesn't get stiff. And that's another thing that happens. People try to control their fingers and automatically their hand turns very stiff. That's another thing that you need to control. What you can do is to hold gently your fingers and just move your wrist around a little bit to relax it while keeping your fingers together. Yeah? Maybe you can also do a little exercise of just contracting your back, pushing your fingers together and just checking that your wrist is still relaxed and then relaxing down. Now you might be thinking, what about the shoulders? What about all the shimmies with the shoulders? And what about all this stuff? I am not saying that's something you shouldn't do. Add that to your dance vocabulary. The richer your dance is, the better for you. But I'm just trying to point out the basics and the things that are important. And actually the shoulder movements are important because they are close to the torso. Whatever is close to the torso gets used more often than what is sort of at the end, I think, from my perspective. So I think a really useful movement would be the shoulder roll. Yeah? Rolling your shoulders back like that is definitely another thing that I would focus on, even more so than the wrist circle. Yeah? So try both shoulders together, relax them to the front, contract back like that. And I would again definitely recommend to first start rolling both shoulders together rather than left and right. Again, for the sake of control and balance between the left and the right shoulder. Yeah? So contract your back and relax to the front. You can even add the breath to it to make it feel a little bit more natural. Yeah? But you don't have to. It's not like that you always have to breathe in to contract. Um, after a while, you will raise your arms and you will be in tension even without breathing in. You're just giving away that sort of energy of being up, of being in an inhaled moment. Yeah? So we are rolling our shoulders back. Make sure that you are not pushing your shoulder up for the same reason as what we said before. You don't want your, your neck to disappear. So you're rolling your shoulders back and slowly you can start raising your arms again doing this. Again, I'm controlling my fingers so the fingers don't go apart. I am controlling my wrist so the wrist is nice and relaxed. And I'm trying to make a small movement. Make sure that you're not doing massive things. Try to start from a muscular contraction. It's all muscle work. It's not just waving your arms around. It all comes from contracting and releasing muscles. So, Push back, contract my upper back and relax. Once you have that, you are super close to doing snake arms because that's the same thing, only you go left and right. Left and right and slowly 
lift your arms. Of course, this is one of the very specific arm movements in Oriental dance, and I would say this is actually one that you will really use because it's an arm movement that is connecting the whole arm to the body. Everything that connects, that puts the body together, is sort of more useful than things that are about isolations. Another controversial thing to say, of course, everybody is obsessed with isolations. People love to isolate, people get very focused on practicing isolations, and they are great for, for example, drum solos. But for songs that have a melody, <laughs> If you start to over isolate, uh, you suppress the melody, you lose the melody a little bit. It's something that you will use probably more for drum focused songs. And of course, dancers love those. I love melodies. So I love to dance to melodies. So I focus more on things that connect the body rather than things that divide the body. Anyway, for now, we will try to move our arms like so and then sometimes connect a little bit of a shoulder roll. Yeah? If you want, you can also shift your weight and do it while shifting weight. Find a song that have, has a fixed tempo and connect your weight to it, shift left and right, and then try to do different things with your arms. Going up and down, doing a shoulder roll, changing left and right, and if you feel confident enough, you can even divide your left and right arm and just use one at a time. But always make sure that it's not just the arm that you're moving that's pretty. Even the arm that is sort of left behind should always look good. Some people, they only focus on what they move and while they do that, the other arm is sort of dying somewhere below. You definitely don't want that. This is why synchronizing the arms, controlling the arms both together is so very important. So just to recap a little bit, focus on the basics, focus on basic line, find a connection between the tension of your arm and your breath, especially in the beginning. The next step, control the different lines where you can move your arms. Also control the connection between your back and your fingers. Next thing is, try to shift weight and move your arms around. Then practice shoulder rolls, synchronized and divided left and right. And after that, you can try to combine it all together. Shifting weight, if you want, you can even push your hips a little bit to the side or even do a shimmy. It's nothing wrong with a shimmy, you can do a shimmy. I just don't want that to divert your attention and just focus on shaking your hips while, again, your arms are sort of disappearing from the picture. Yeah, you should be focusing on everything at the same time. Yeah? All right, guys. So again, if you would have any questions, if there is something that isn't clear or even something you disagree with, which is completely fine, feel, fi uh, feel free to reach out to me. I am in self-isolation, like a lot of you, excuse the Legos and a little bit of a mess around. It's my seven year old son who is in self-isolation with me. So. We are all in this together and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I'm looking forward to seeing your dance videos. If you would want to practice this and you would want me to have a look at it and sort of comment on it, I'm happy to do that as well. And I always wish you a beautiful day. Stay safe, stay healthy and happy dancing.